So you're getting into the twilight of your motorcycling days and you've decided you need a nice laid back bike, like a Honda CB1100. Or do you? What should an aging motorcyclist be riding these days? No, a mid-size adventure bike for God's sake. <laughs> Well, I was out with some buddies from Selbridge Riders. Uh, <laughs> it started off sunny, but this is what it ended up as. But ah, never mind. It was a good day out anyway. Uh, but we did a fair bit of mileage. And, uh, you know, it brings it home to you that how different bikes cope with different journeys. Uh, I was on my CB1100 today, uh, or that day. And, uh, yeah, it's not the most comfortable of bikes. It got me thinking and made me make this video. So there's two things I want to cover in this video. Uh, seat to peg distance, that's number one. And number two, seat height. When seat height should be taken with a pinch of salt. There's a lot of bikes out there with very intimidating seat heights. But what I'm going to say is not all seat heights are equal. That big seat height might still be okay for you. And in this video, we'll have a look at some comparisons as well. And go through why that big tall adventure bike might be perfect for you in your little short legs like I have. I bought this bike in my 30s and I didn't think much about the comfort at the time. I just liked the look of the bike and I bought it. <laughs> I might have sat on the bike, yeah, great. I can reach the floor, great. But you know, I didn't think much of it. It's quite a low seat height. But the riding position was quite extreme on it. The pegs were much higher. They're here now, they were up here. I've recently converted them and of course, the bars, they've been converted to be a very much more kind of road type position before there were clip-ons down here. But again, at the time, okay, I remember going to Le Mans and thinking, ah, you know, there's a you know, bit of wrist ache, but you know, I'll live with it. I'm a young 30 year old or 30 something anyway. Uh, but the peg position never, never really bothered me or anything like that. But of course, as we all get a bit older, we get a bit less, uh, <laughs> a bit less bendy. <laughs> so something you find we don't think about very much when buying bikes, or I didn't, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't, is the seat to peg ratio when we buy bikes. And it's because I've got a bit of a dodgy left hip. <laughs> I, I pay much more attention now to seat to peg ratio or seat to peg length, I should say. And this is where adventure bikes score really well, really well. Well, some of them anyway. But it's amazing the variation between uh, seat and peg height and how I think a lot of people when they're buying bikes pay no attention to it. And in, in a lot of places, you can't test ride bikes and stuff and you don't get to find out about this stuff until you buy the bike and find out, oh, this isn't for me. So this is going to be a series of two videos on about motorbikes for old men and how and why we should all be leading to adventure bikes. And probably the reason why they're so bloody popular. So if I look at my Daytona now, I'm getting around, let's have a look. Yeah, about 47, 48 centimeters seat to peg height. It's gonna vary slightly depending on how firm or soft the seat is, but that's made that pretty damn nice now. But I went around a few bike shops with my tape measure. I got thrown out of a couple for being a weirdo. <laughs> Measuring uh, seat, to peg, uh, seat to peg distances to see what, what was out there and how they changed between each other. It's amazing. You could go in and buy a bike and go, Jesus, I, I didn't think it was gonna be that cramped. Even the smallest of differences can make a huge difference to you. So let's start off with my Triumph Daytona 1200 here. So my seat height was 790 mil but my seat to peg distance was 395 mil. So quite short, that's quite aggravating on the hips, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, after I lowered it, I increased my seat to peg distance to 45 centimeters uh, or 450 mil. Uh, obviously my seat height stayed the same, but that's given me so much more legroom, so much more of a comfortable bike. But 450 mil is still reasonably tight for a bike. Let's pick a few others. I'll go down now, Triumph Thruxton, I've got a chance to measure this in the shop, 810 mil seat height uh, with a 450 to 460 mil uh, seat to peg distance there. So 
The pegs are still fairly high, you know, it's a bit of a sporty bike, they're expecting you to lean it, they don't want the pegs too low on that bike. So short enough, but still better than my bike, um, but they've been able to do that with a slightly higher seat height too, of course. Let's have a look at the Triumph Trident. 805 mil seat height, nice bike, I love this bike. And the seat to peg distance was a lovely 460 to 470 mil, something like that, something like that. So it, it's still quite short, I will say, it's still quite short. We're not in the uh, comfortable territory yet. But uh, surprise, surprise, Triumph Speed Triple RS, 830 mil seat height. And uh, although we've got high pegs on this, because they are expecting you to corner harshly on this bike. If you were corner harshly, is that a thing? Corner harshly, corner hard, let's say on this bike. Uh, but it's a still, it's a very generous 480 mil between the seat and the pegs because of that original seat height. So a nice bit of ground clearance, but actually more comfortable, more comfortable on the hips than the Trident. Amazing, amazing. Who would have thought? Now bring in my Honda CB 1100EX. A quite short seat height, 790 mil, and the seat to two peg distance is about 490 mil on this. It, it weirdly enough, it feels shorter though. It's not incredibly comfortable. Um, I, you know, I will say anything below, you know, 500 mil, I, I think we're finding a little bit on the tight side, especially for people with longer legs. What else we got now? Triumph Speed Twin. You can tell, obviously, I was in a I was in a Triumph showroom. 809 mil seat height on that, but a reasonably generous 520 millimeters seat to peg. Not bad, not bad. We can do better though. Weirdly enough now, uh, there was a 2019 Honda Africa Twin, the 1100, I mentioned that. Huge seat height, nine, oops, huge seat height, 920 mil. But not a great seat to peg distance. Not a great seat to peg distance. I used to actually own an Africa Twin, the 1000cc uh, uh, one. And I noticed that myself. Now, so I'm quite surprised at that one. Quite surprised at that one. Look, more seat to peg distance or similar on a Triumph Bonneville T100. Short enough seat height, nice bike, lovely bike actually. Uh, but a reasonably generous 520 to 530 mil um, seat to peg distance. So more comfort again. And each bike I'm going down, this distance is getting bigger. Just in case you didn't spot the theme. <laughs> T120. Same seat height I measured, but now we've got 540 to 550 mil, something like that uh, between the seat and the peg. That, that's fantastic. A little bit more ergo comfort there as well. Now, look, I, I will say, I was walking around the showroom with a tape measure. Take these measurements with a pinch of salt, but you get what I'm trying to say here. And, uh, you know, I got chased around a bit by, <laughs> by the salesman, like, you know, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> Scrambler XE, nice generous 540 mil, uh, reasonably high pegs on this, kind of on T120 territory, but still a lot more than a lot of other bikes. Uh, big tall 840 mil seat height in this, and so they're being able to be more generous with that seat to peg distance. 1200 Rally, 540 to 550 mil. I say 540 to 550 just because uh, it was a bit hard to kind of measure it in, in the rush I was in. Big tall seat height, 895 mil but a very generous legroom, very generous legroom. And with the seat in the low position, we were just down to about 520, 530, something like that. So still reasonable seat to, seat to peg distance with the seat in the low position. And the GT, I was kind of similar. Yeah, 540 to 550 mil with the seat in the high position. But the daddy of them all, the daddy of them all. And this is, this is if you're looking for seat to peg uh, comfort, it's got to be the Triumph 900 Rally. Yeah, tall, hefty seat height, 870 mil. But man, that seat to peg distance is a ginormous 570 mil. Ginormous. This is the most comfortable bike that, that I've ever test ridden uh, in, terms of that, in, in terms of that kind of hip angle and leg angle and everything like that. It's absolutely fantastic. And the great thing about it is, is we can get rid of that tall 870 mil seat height uh, put the seat in the lower position, but still have a massive 550 mil seat to peg distance. Incredible, incredible, fantastic bike. So that's it. That's me looking at uh, seat to peg ratios. I did get round uh, to a Suzuki and Guzzi dealer and measure the Guzzi 850 and a few other bikes and stuff like that. And uh, I uh, 
stuck the piece of paper in my pocket and it flew out of the motorway because I didn't put it in properly. But look, you get the point. So, okay, I'm very triumph centric there, but you get the point. It's, it's something to look at when you're buying, when you're buying a bike because uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, my CB1100, I wouldn't like to do more than a day on the road on it. And it's purely down to that seat to foot peg position. Now, I'm over 60 years old, and that's why. And of course, you know, when you're in your 30s and 40s, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. You can put up with anything. And I know, obviously, there are lots of 70-year-olds out there who are doing 20,000 miles a year, 50,000 miles a year, and they can do it on a Honda Monkey and everything like that. But you are the exception, guys. You are the exception. <laughs> Take two of my bikes, this Triumph Daytona 1200. It's got 126 mm travel and a 790 mm seat height. Also, my Honda CB1100 at the other end there, that has 790 mm seat height. But that's just a seat height as it's sitting there, uh, sitting there on its own suspension. So this is using up about, uh, let's say 5% of my, 5% uh, static sag. So out of my entire 126 mm travel that this bike's got, its own weight is using 5% of that 126 mil. Right, I sit on the bike and I set up the preload. So I'm aiming for 30% preload on here, or 30% sag, I should say, on the rear end of this bike. Now, your figure might have been 25%, could have been 35%. I'm just choosing 30 here, and that's what I have my bike set at, actually. So in that case, an extra 25% of that travel, because the bike's already used up 5%, that's gonna use up an extra 31 and a half mil. So the seat height is reduced now from 790 mil to 758 and a half mil. Now that's very specific, but the Honda comes out at 0.5 as well. So I'll leave it at that. So now if I do the same on the Honda, I've got 114 mil of rear travel um, and 25% that, and again, I'm going 25% because the static sag on this is 5%, so I've already used up 5 mil of my travel at the seat height they're giving me. But if I take up another 25% of my overall 114 mil travel, uh, that's going to use up another 28.5 mil. So that's going to give me a new seat height of 761 millimeters. Uh, no, 761.5 millimeters. Uh, so my Triumph at the end of the day has a laden seat height, which is 3 millimeters lower than my Honda CB1100, even though the manufacturing specifications say they've both got a 790 mil seat height. So seat height isn't real seat height. Laden seat height is what you need to be interested in. And you're going, Jesus Christ, how to labor a really long point and come out with a three mil difference. Ah, well, it's three mil difference on these two bikes with pretty short suspension. But check out what happens when you look at a Triumph Tiger 900 Rally versus a Triumph Tiger 900 GT. So I've got a Tiger 900 GT here with 170 mil of rear suspension travel and it's got an 830 mil seat height. Now let's assume that my static sag, the weight of the bike is using up, let's say 5% of the uh, suspension travel. So if I'm targeting a rider sag of 30% and I'm just looking at my rear end here to keep things uh, simple. If I'm targeting a rider sag of 30%, I'm gonna drop another 42 and a half mil of uh, um, suspension travel. So that's gonna bring my seat height down to 787.5 mil. Let's round that down to 787. Now, if I look at my uh, 900 rally suspension travel, I've got 870 mil of seat height. It's 40 mil higher than the uh, GT. But then if I apply my same rule, I'm going to use up another 25% of my suspension travel. I've already used up 5% with some static sag. So that's going to use up another 57.5 mil of travel. So that's going to bring my seat height, height down to 812.5 mil. Let's call it 812. Now, given that this bike has a massive seat to peg ratio, we can quite handily put the seat in the lower position and still have a massive, um, really comfortable uh, riding position and bring that, that, that seat height down to 792.5 mil. So at the end of the day, if I round them down, I get to a Rally Pro of a seat height of 792 mil and the GT of 787 mil. That's a difference of five mil. So on the surface of it, we look at this 
big seat height difference and going, geez, there's no way I could go on that. Uh, there's no way I could take that Rally Pro. If we just apply some simple comparisons, and I know these are simple, people sag, sag targets might be slightly different, but I've got to pick something. And 30% is a reasonable value to go for uh, sag on, a, on the rear suspension on these bikes. That difference, that seat height difference is now five mil. So, you know, don't let those big seat heights put you completely off. It doesn't mean to say they have a massive laden seat height. Now I know that some of you, they will dispute my figures because the suspension travel is from the axle of the rear wheel and you don't sit on top of the axle, your pillion does and everything like that. But look, I said these are rough and ready figures. Um, I haven't allowed for the seat padding uh, that seat, you know, that could, that could well drop another, you know, 10, 15, 20 mil, depending on the, how, uh, how weighty you are or not. <laughs> so these are rough and ready figures. You know the point I'm trying to make. And I'll give you an even more extreme example of this. Let's take Harley Davidson. Now, Harley Davidson are quite good. You look in their owner's manual and stuff and on their websites, they give you uh, laden weights uh, or laden seat heights, and they're very useful. Uh, they quote them with an 180 pound rider on, so that for us that's 81.7 kilos. So, average weight guy, yeah, yeah, I, I'd love to be 81.7 kilos. <laughs> Maybe not quite so average around these parts, but let's just say. So, Harley Davidson, let's have a look at their seat height. Their Pan America Special has an unladen seat height uh, of 875 mil, and that's the seat height in the normal high position, so 34.4 inches. Now, if we take the laden seat height along with that 82 kilo guy and put the seat in the low position, we're down to 790 mil or 31.1 inches. That's quite a difference. We're talking 85 mil already. Then, of course, if you buy the uh, Pan America with the adaptive ride height feature, have the seat in the low position, we can now go down to 772 mil, 30.4 inches for a massive 103 millimeter difference from the advertised seat height of the bike. So again, that's probably an extreme example, but a great example how is, you know, when a seat height isn't a seat height. So it's good that I highly provide this detail actually. My next video in this series of two, uh, adventure bikes for old men or motorbikes for old men, uh, I'm gonna focus a bit more on suspension and some considerations there. Being that it's Christmas time, that probably won't make it out there for uh, another week or two. So that's it for this episode. There were my two features to look for. Seat to peg ratio that a lot of us don't think about. Uh, I know you're all saying that. No, I always think about that. Well, I never. <laughs> uh, but you do when you ride these bikes. Uh, but as I say, I've since lowered that. So seat to peg ratio, that was my one thing. And the other thing was when seat height isn't really seat height. Don't look at that headline value. Have a think about uh, the bike. The more suspension travel there is, the less likely that that seat height is gonna be anywhere near that advertised seat height. It's gonna be much lower. The next video is on suspension and it's continuing on that theme, uh, motorcycles for old men or, uh, or uh, adventure bikes for old men. Uh, bikes like this are actually much much more comfortable than a crappy Royal Enfield 650. Fuck no, I can't say crappy Royal Enfield 650 because I'll have the Royal Enfield mod the bane for my blood. <laughs> well, they did when I did that BSA <laughs> Godstar video anyway. No, I didn't mean to say crappy Royal Enfield 650. It's a lovely bike. I'm not, I'm not fucking lying. I truthfully mean that. He's freaking to fucking tell me. Anyway, so, this is a long close of a video, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very long close, isn't it? I'm <laughs> <laughs>